So we're here at the Synology, and uh, who are you? Uh, hi, my name is Jonathan. So you have uh, a lot of NAS. Are you the world leader in NAS? Um, yes, uh, I think we're in the industry that we have. We're a really strong player at, uh, at NAS already. Yeah. Our user, I believe our user interface is the most friendly one. It's really easy to use. You have some nice apps, and you have a lot of updates. For how long? If, you, if I buy this NAS, how long are you going to update it? Uh, for five years. Five years guarantee? Uh, not guarantee, but so far we try to do it for five years because there are a lot of resources that we need to put in to keep every user's NAS updated. So even at the, the newest DSM 5.2, the NAS you bought at 2010 still be, so will be willing to upgrade to 5.2. So I have DS210 uh, or something? Yes, 210. Still, it's still updated? Yes, it's still updated to DSM 5.2. I bought it so long time ago and it's still being updated. Yes. So that means you have a bunch of guys doing that, right? It's, yes, a, it's uh, a lot of work. Yes, in our company, 70% 70, 70 of our employees is uh, software developers. So 70% is firmware upgrade team? Uh, well, everyone in the team. That, that keep the, uh, We try to add more new functions and new functionalities into our, our uh, packages. Did you ever have security problems? Uh, we used to have one. Hard just, bleed? Uh, not hard bleed, but uh, there's one so you can come and call signal locker. But that's, that is resolved from users. Uh, we, we have a patch already that already fixed that issues, but some of the users like, did, not, did not upgrade their NAS uh, frequent enough. So that's. Do you have all the customers' emails so you can tell them upgrade, upgrade, upgrade? Yes, I or do. You cannot. Uh, uh, we have their we have their email, but we can never force user to upgrade, right? When they when they stream a video or something, you should stream a little advertising automatically in the beginning that says you need to upgrade your firmware. Yes, I think after that after that incident, uh, users are more aware of the that should keep their NAS always up to date. So, yeah. Is it difficult to update? You just go on the UI and you click and it updates. Yes, you just go into our control panel and go to our. Uh, uh, there's a settings of our software software version. You just click the button to check if there's any new update. If there is one, just just hit update. That's it. And then the machine will automatically download, install, and reboot. So uh, for many years now, you are using Marvel. A lot of Marvel uh, CPUs ARM processor of Marvel, right? Yes. Uh, to do NAS. Yes. So uh, uh, which Marvel processors you were using? Uh, we actually Armada. Use Armada and actually what uh, a wide range of selections because in Ma Armada they are different CPUs as well. Yeah. Yeah. So and then uh, now you're also releasing uh, some some uh, NAS with uh, uh, Annapurna. Annapurna Labs. That's correct. So this is a new model. Yes. So what are we looking at here? Uh, we're looking at the S715, and this is actually using a quad core processor from Annapurna. So it's a quad core ARM Cortex A15, maybe, or it's pretty it's powerful. A15. A15. Yes. So it's, a, it's, it's the most powerful that can be pretty much in. Uh, in 32-bit ARM processor, yes. quad-core, so that means there's a lot of performance. So what can it do compared to previous generation? Uh, well, the, the, big, the biggest jump from this model is the encryptions. So that even if, if it's encrypted, we still offer uh, 200, over 200 megabytes per second on reading and over 70 megabytes on writing. How, how fast was it before? Uh, it, before, uh, the previous model, previous that we use Intel model that does not have a hardware encryption engine, the performance is about 70 to 60 megabytes per second. So, so it's, it's three almost times faster than Intel. Almost three times faster than the previous Intel generations. So how much did you use Intel? Only a few times or a lot? Uh, in our in our higher generation models, they higher sector of the model they use Intel solutions, but in our uh, consumer products, we tend to use uh, Amada. As well. So uh, the users uh, might be small business. Mm -hmm. They want to have a lot of encrypted data. Yes. They don't want to have it open so people can steal it. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So they encrypt it with a very high uh, encryption quality. Yes. Uh, we offer AES two fifty six. So it's almost near a military grade encryption. So it's pretty much impossible to. Yes. Crack. You would take a supercomputer like a month to just calculate the key to decrypt the file. It wouldn't take a supercomputer like billions of years. No, well, not billions of years, but I, I would, I think, I doubt anyone will have access to a supercomputer to do that sort of calculations. Only uh, Obama or something. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and then, how much it cost? Uh, we actually don't have uh, the price set for this model yet. It's planning to come out um, in the Q4 of this year. So is this the high end? This is low end? Yeah, this is lower end. And it's also Annapurna? Yes. And this one is using a dual core processor. Is it also ARM Cortex A15? Yes. So, uh, but they look the same, but it's different. Yeah, uh, the software is, the processor is different, but the I/O cores is almost identical. 
And uh, so in the previous generation, if you want something that looks like this, mm -hmm. the previous one is how much? Is two hundred dollar or uh, around two hundred to three hundred dollars? Yeah. And you have some cheaper stuff too, right? Yes. Uh, you you show it around. Yeah. Let's go. If we go over here, this is the S two one six SE. SE stands for Special Edition. This is our um, the most the cheapest model that we can use, that we can purchase right now. It's really light. Yeah, it's really light because it doesn't it does not offer a hot swappable design like this one. You can simply pop the hard drive. Yeah. But if you want to unload the hard drive, you have to take out those two screws and open up the box like this. And then uh, what is the CPU here? Uh, the CPU is using Amada. So Amada and uh, so, how's the performance? Is it okay? The, the performance is okay for daily use or like simply um, the file storage within the network. Is it better than my five-year-old uh, Synology? Synology? I believe so. Yes. And so, what kind of price are we talking on here? Uh, this one would be uh, the retail price at around 150 US dollar to 150. 130 to 150. 130 without the hard disk. Yes, without so, hard disk. Uh, let's let's go around that because you have some pretty cool uh, applications, okay. right? Are you showing this somewhere? Uh, sure, this one. Uh, this year we have an uh, implement a new application called Docker. But so what we're looking at here is that um, we can run actually multiple uh, DSMs within one Docker. So let's say given an uh, environment such as in a school environment. So, the, so this is web based. Yes, this is all web based. But it's local web. Uh, this connecting not over the internet, but just locally. Yeah, right now it's locally, but. Um, all the things away in the demo it makes it is sufficient. So you center. could go over the web. We, yes, up. we could we could connect over yeah. the internet. And so so is we, it we can just simply run another disk station using our like we can run multiple disk station within one tower. So we are looking at we're logging in from multiple points and we have multiple DS that is running at this moment. So we can actually run. What's four. going on here? So this we actually have four systems that is running within one hardware. So each we can give we can set up have completely different user space, different RAM. We can isolate the RAM, isolate the storage. It's kind of like virtualization. Yes, it's like virtualization of our own operating system called uh, DSM, which is running on this ARM processor right here, right? Uh, this one is uh, Intel. Intel. Yeah. But you can do this on the ARM? Uh, no, not really. Not really? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Uh, because of the uh, limitations of the calculation power. All right. Yeah. So how about the Anaconda? That uh, no, not not so much because it, it requires it requires Intel APIs in order to run the virtualizations. So uh, how much is that one? On this one, the retail price is about let me think, US dollar. Yeah, around. It's about five hundred US dollars. Five hundred US dollar, and yes. then you have five hot swappable. Yes. You can put eight terabyte, eight terabyte, eight terabyte, eight terabyte, eight terabyte. That's correct. And cool. you have you, you uh, for this one. That, the model name is 15. That means you can connect two extra external external hard drive extensions. So you can connect up to 15 hard drives in total onto this machine. So you can have some uh, RAID arrays. What do you call them? Yeah, uh, we call it ex expansion units. Expansion units. Yes, and we each have of five, them have five. Five. Yeah. And there's no CPU or something in the expansion no, unit. No. It's just like a U. What is it? USB. It's, it's just like uh, we we go we we'll go through it using uh, eSATA. So that's the interface that we're connecting. And to. where does it go? Uh, it's through the back. So it goes there, there. You connect the ESA down there, and then you can have 15 running on this one. Yes. How total. much is an expansion? Uh... Expansion unit. We don't have a price. I don't have the price ready uh -huh. at this moment. But what it's, is, what but is it's cheaper than an us. It's much cheaper. Yes. And uh, what is this? Uh, this is our this is our newest uh, decoder. So it's, it provides up to six, 36 channels HD live views. So one simple box that only consumes five watts of power, but you have the ability to run more than 36 channels live view in the real time. So one of the uses for Synology is recording security camera footage. Yes. And then uh, the whole system would also decode right here. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, we. So the, the point of this, you can put the, the small box at the front desk or for the sur surveillance personnel to have live view monitors, but but keep the NAS in a different, like a more secure location. Let's say the server room or or like um, the place where you keep all these electronic devices. So you stream, you can stream up to 36 channels onto your onto your uh, front desk. There's a little bit of a, a lag or no? Uh, yes, a little bit right now because all of them right. is recording and it's within. Uh, right now, the, the internet is really uh, is really jogging. 
at okay. this moment. Ah, it's going over the internet. Can we just go around a bit over here? Yeah. Um, are you showing your application? Oh, uh, okay. Do you have this crazy uh, application? What is the DS router? A DS router is a is a router. It's an application that you can change the settings onto your on the. So you're routers. making a router now? Yes. Is this your new product? Yes, this is our newest product. You just launched it now? Uh, yeah. Uh, we have a first, the first time show this in the CPIP in Germany. This is the second time we showcase this product. So you are making a router. Why? Uh, the reason that we feel that. All about NAS has to go through a router or a switch to connect to the internet. So the reason that we're going making a router is that we make sure the perfect compatibility with our NAS devices. And we feel like um, the NAS, the, all, of the, all of our routers in the market today has really hard interface and they are really hard to use. Especially the parental control or the, the, um, the speed limits is really hard to set up. But uh, the firewalls and stuff. The firewalls, they are, yeah, they are really hard to set up. But since we are really good at uh, uh, making our own operating system, so we have a new operating system for a router. It's called SRM. So what you're looking at is the setup page for our router. So you have a, so you can go to a status, see 5 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, and you go to the right uh, wireless settings. Of course, you can go to parental setup. So you can, so these are the current connected devices. So you can just set up one plan and set a schedule. It's really simple and easy to like allow or disallow this person to use uh, internet. So it's all picture and graphic design. Can you, uh, you can even control. Uh, you can go on the iPad and say that YouTube is not allowed or a special yes. application. Yes. You can actually control the apps yes. of the kid and yes. say the app for games is okay until 6 p.m. and then you go to sleep. Right? That's correct. So you go to your traffic control. So you select one of the Android devices, let's say probably your kid's, uh, kid's uh, smartphone. So you just go to edit. So you can set it uploading or... Uh, Whoa, you can set limit. the speeds. You can set the guaranteed speeds and the maximum bandwidth for specific apps. Yes, and then we can create app rules. So right now it's actually filtering the applications that's going through this device in real time. But you can also select from a list of building applications. Let's say um, you don't want to browse CNN or Facebook, Facebook chat. You can select the name of the application and set up the speed limit for that app on this device. Wow, that's really impressive. Nobody's doing this, right? Um, this um, is uh, this is yes. what uh, Obama is doing. Nobody else. <laughs> that's probably that's you're doing true. deep packet inspection. Yes. On a router. Yes. This and we're offering to uh, and this this model is not. It's not, the price for this model is not going to be re really high end, like super expensive. So we're targeting a mid range router. Like ninety nine dollar? Uh, no, it's, uh, the MRSP is around one fifty to two hundred US dollars. One hundred fifty to two hundred? Yes. And it gets a little bit hot. What kind of processor are you using? We're using a uh, from Broadcom. One of the processors from Broadcom. It's so a, a new core processor. A new ARM processor from Qualcomm. Yes. To do uh, to do that kind of stuff. Yes. And you want a price for that or no? This is the price you got for this? Yes, uh, for BC Award. The Golden Award for this year. Who's BC? <laughs> I'm actually not sure. It's very nice. I should be giving awards. How much you would pay for my award? <laughs> no, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but uh, on this device, we actually have a package center. So you'll still be able to host your own videos, photo albums, right off your routers. So we, because we have a USB ports. USB 3. Yeah, USB 3. That's and, fast. Is it, is and, it using the USB 3 speed? Uh, yes, it is. And we have an SD card slot, so you can put your most common and access board files yeah. onto the router and then use our package center to host the videos, host the pictures, host the files all from your router. Host them on the internet and host locally? Uh, both. And all the different protocols like DLNA and all that stuff? Yes. And Chromecast and uh, all everything? Uh, I'm not sure about Chromecast support on the video station okay. because it's harder to do transcoding on the on the routers. Is it transcoding? Uh, it's not transcoding. Not transcoding. Yes. But how about that expansion module for ten more hard drives? That would be awesome if it could work here. But this that's yeah. a SATA one. You don't have a USB one? No, I, we don't have a USB one. But someone could could connect a, a USB drive over. 
Um, I don't think it's compatible with this router at this so moment. Just one ATV, that's it. Yes. And then uh, you have so you use it as a NAS also. And and it's uh, like a miniature NAS. Yeah. That we include the functions of a router and a NAS together. And so does it have the fastest Wi-Fi that's on the market and stuff like that? Uh, the Wi-Fi we're using 18, 1900. So that's like a mid-range of the AC, AC specifications. And we have a special feature is that, uh, let's say if at night you don't want your kids to access the Wi-Fi, so you have a simple physical switch uh, to switch off all the wireless connections. So it becomes a, like a switch, not a router. So this is like a switch to turn off all the wireless connections on this device. Nice, so the dad can still be connected downstairs, Yes. but the kids thing. can go to sleep. Yes, and we have another cool feature that we have a schedule on-off LEDs. Because with some people find that uh, those flashing LEDs at the room is really I hate annoying. Them. People, yes. some, some, some so we can set a schedule to turn, turn it on or off, or turn off on the mobile app. So if you push this button, right now the L, all of the LCDs should be turned off. We're having with uh, some yeah, interference. The competitor yes. is trying to disrupt your app. Yeah. Can you show anything else about your apps? Because this is DS router, but you have DS uh, video, you have DS Oh, I know music. why, because I turn off the Wi-Fi. Oh, you turn off the Wi-Fi? Yeah. Yeah, so actually you were showing your functionality. Does it work now? Yeah, it's, a, it's, an, it's, a, it's an iPad. Yeah. It's not your fault. But uh, how about... That's a glitch. Okay. That's a glitch. That's okay. Uh, so, so, we, so on the mobile app, we have ability to also monitor the traffic control. We're, we are able to see all the connected devices in real time. So you would be able to see all those, uh, like devices you were seeing over here? going through this new router right now, and we can turn off and see what they are seeing right now. Like, we can see their, uh, what kind of protocols that, you, that they are using. So let's say we have four current connected devices. You can click on one of them. It's loading. There's a competitor just over there. He's doing a, a QNAP people. They're trying to make it break. Yeah, but uh, normally in here you can set up if it's if it's banned or like you can set up the priority to get yeah. the router. You can set up top priority, medium priority, or lowest priority to, to have the internet yeah. connections right, right on the iPad. Uh, do you have the other DS apps? Do you have them, uh, the uh, DS file? So this one is to check out all the files that you have on the NAS? Yes. But uh, we have to demonstrate Connect. this feature. And then you have DS Photo, watching photos. Yes. And these are, uh, so basically uh, among your 70% of engineers, software engineers, uh, there's some good apps being made. Yes. And, and millions of people are using them, right? Yes, that's correct. But is everything there or much more? What's going to happen in the future? Um, in the future, we plan to have, uh, we, at this moment, we're, gonna, we're just going to uh, put out all of our resources on this router and our newest products. Yeah, because um, this is a new, a new segment that we decided to start doing it this year. So we many, have many, there's many routers in the world, and yeah. I'm sure there's many parents, many fathers who want to play like the, the NSA a little bit. Yeah. they want to see what happens in the home, or maybe even the companies, and uh, it, it would be uh, the, the employees would be get a little bit pissed at Synology, maybe. Of course, because, because right now you can see what they are seeing when they are working, right? So some, you can see some, some workers is spend more time watching YouTube at work or spend too much time on the Facebook. You can all see all of that information is, uh, is available within our uh, router. So, some employees are uh, spending the whole day on Facebook yes. and uh, chatting. Yes. And now the boss will be able to cut them off. Yes, <laughs> using our router. So that's, that's going to increase uh, productivity. It's great. Of course, yes.